Welcome to part one of implant-based breast reconstruction. This is a tissue expander, and this tissue expander is usually underneath the breast skin, but just for demonstration purposes, here you see it outside of the skin, and it's actually being filled with fluid. This is a similar thing that happens underneath the skin in the post-surgery setting in a breast reconstruction patient. This tissue expander is being filled with fluid, which is what happens in the post-operative setting as well. A magnet is usually used to identify the tissue expander underneath the breast skin. Just like this, there's a magnetic port on tissue expander that helps us to find it in the clinic. Once we find it, we are able to use a needle, as pictured here, which is an infusion needle, that goes through to the tissue expander and then fluid is placed. And this happens weekly in the clinic setting. Hi, my friends. So today I wanted to talk somewhat about breast reconstruction. Today I really be talking, focusing in on implant-based breast reconstruction. And breast reconstruction is typically done in terms of implant-based in about three stages. So at the first stage, typically a patient undergoes a mastectomy. At a mastectomy, all of the breast tissue is removed. At that same time, typically what I do is I put in a tissue expander. This is a tissue expander here. You can see that. This tissue expander is actually filled with some fluid. The tissue expander has a silicone shell, and what happens at the time of the mastectomy is usually I put air in the tissue expander. And after a couple weeks, what happens is the patient comes to clinic, and we take out all of the air, and what we do is we start putting fluid in slowly and slowly. Typically, the fluid is put into basically exactly what it sounds like, a tissue expander to expand the overlying skin, the overlying dermis. So a tissue expander is placed at that time, um, and that's the purpose. We fill it up with air at subsequent visits weekly in order to expand the breast skin to the size that really the patient is okay with. What I always tell patients is I really want them to tell me when they feel like they're close to where they want to be. After that period of time where they're close to where they want to be, we wait about two to three months, and at that point, we have another surgery where we go in and we exchange the tissue expander, which is a temporary device, so this stays in for about two, sorry, three months, and we exchange that for an implant, which is a permanent device. Typically, the implant is usually about 60 to 70 cc's larger than tissue expander, so I always tell patients to really let me know when they're getting close because I know the implant we're gonna use is gonna be slightly bigger. And that is to really give that effect where it kind of stretches the skin a little bit more and kind of gives a really nice look aesthetically. After that, where the implant is placed and the tissue expander is removed, then there's another stage of surgery where possibly patients who need nipple reconstruction, for example, or additional revisions such as fat grafting and things like that. At the time that the permanent implant is put in, typically I routinely do fat grafting, which is basically a term to describe where you get fat from somewhere that there's excess. Usually patients direct me to where there's some excess. And you basically fat graft it into the breast just to allow for a nice transition and a nice shape. So if you stay along, I'll kind of show you how the tissue expander is prepared in the operating room. In the operating room, the tissue expander is wrapped with alloderm, which is cadaver dermis that's been completely stripped of all the cells and sterilized. This serves as a very nice supportive tissue layer, especially in cases where the tissue expander is placed above the muscle. This is what we call pre-pectoral breast reconstruction. And this comprises about 95%, if not more, of the breast reconstructions that I perform personally. The plastic tabs you can see are used to secure the tissue expander in a very precise position and pocket along the chest wall. Demonstrated here, you can see the metal port and that is accessed in the post-operative setting as demonstrated earlier. This tissue expander particularly is filled with air, which you can see there, and the air is removed in the post-operative setting and saline is slowly placed. Mm -hmm.